As we approach the 2023 elections, a not-for-profit not organization, Diasporas for Good Governance, is calling on INEC to subject its voting systems and equipment to multi-stakeholders audit and integrity test. The group is drawing the attention of Nigerians to certain organizational and operational challenges that may impact the outcome and credibility of the 2023 elections. The upcoming elections, holding on February 25th, will be distinctive in Nigeria's history due to the massive introduction of technology. For the first time, voters will be identified and accredited through the use of the bimodal voter accreditation system, while polling unit results will be uploaded directly from the polling units, transmitted and published electronically for the public through the use of the election result viewing portal. But despite these claims by INEC of its readiness and credibility, one civil society organization, the Diasporan for Good Governance, says there are inherent lapses in the technologies to be used and wants it improved. We found that the abyss is not as credible and as efficient as advertised. Uh, one key example is to be found in the voter register that was just displayed. In that voter register, Nigerians saw multiple incidences of underage registrations, outrightly fake registrations, and some of those registrations that did not meet INEC business rules. And the DGG is saying that with a compromised voter register, that the elections cannot be credible. And if INEC is advertising ABIS as a software that it's used to process all those registration requests, then what the voter register is suggesting to us is that the ABIS software is not as efficient as advertised. The city shortcoming in the electoral process is the inability of beavers to capture attempted and successful accreditation of voters so as to assess its success rate. The group also accuses INEC of attempting to suppress the votes of some geopolitical zones through its system and PVC distribution. We have looked at the PVC distribution data and we have agents working on the ground and we have seen that for instance in some local governments in Sokoto State we have seen complaints from our field agents that INEC is engaged. INEC by INEC we mean their field staff now is engaged in discriminatory practices of issuing PVCs to indigents and withholding PVCs of non-indigents in certain regions. We have also heard this from people in Lagos and in some other parts of Nigeria. So we're calling on INEC. If indeed INEC has printed PVCs, why is it distributing PVCs according to region, according to place of origin, or according to the name of, on the PVCs? The group is calling for a national dialogue among various stakeholders to mobilize input to support and strengthen INEX technological systems and technical competencies and to demand the highest level of commitment by staff of the electoral body to guarantee a successful conduct of the general elections. The upcoming elections in February 2023 will be distinctive in Nigeria's history due to the introduction of technology. For the first time, voters will be identified and accredited with the use of the bimodal voter registration system, popularly referred to as BVAS, while polling unit level results will be uploaded directly from the polling unit, transmitted and published for the public through the use of the election result viewing portal IREV. But despite claims by INEC of its credibility, the Diasporas for Good Governance says there are inherent lapses in the technologies and wants it improved. Joining us on the show this morning to discuss ways the INEC can improve the use of technology for the election is Chima Christian, member of Diaspora for Good Governance. Welcome to the morning show. Right. Good morning and thanks for having me here. Uh, th thank you so much, uh, Ch Chima. Chima, what's been your read, you know, as regards the entire process? Are you satisfied? You are calling for sort of like a peer review, you know, to be able to ascertain the integrity of the process. But what's been your read with the interfaces you've had? Well, the thing is this, that the experts for good governance have looked at all the systems and processes that will be deployed for the upcoming elections. And we have looked at subjected them to critical analysis and data-backed analysis. And we find that there are avenues for further improvements on those devices. And we are mindful that we have less than 50 days to the elections. And therefore, some of the amendments or some of the quick fixes we want to have on those systems are things we can resolve within the time frame we have before election deployment uh, come February 2023. All right, so what, what are some of these improvements that you talk about? For instance, uh, the Biva system, which is the system that will be used for accreditation of voters, 
Um, since it was first deployed in Isoko uh, Delta states, uh, nobody has act actually known the data of its success or fail rates. And the DDG monitored elections in Anambra 2027-17 elections, monitored elections in Anambra 2021 rather, and then the offseason elections we had in Oshun and the Dekete states. And from our interactions with people, we saw that there were multiple complaints of people who, were, who presented their validly issued INEC PVCs and INEC beavers could not accredit them. And then we said that the beavers is a wonderful device, but the fundamental flaw we find in it is that it only records and captures the number of successful accreditations. Because at the end of the elections in the evening, what the beavers shows you is total number of accredited voters. But from our interactions, we know that there are people who presented their, their validly issued uh, cards and they weren't accredited, and some of them are in their numbers. But we don't have the specific data because the beavers is not measuring it. So our now suggested improvement is for there to be a slight software upgrade so that the beavers is capturing number of successful accreditations and number of attempted accreditations. So that at the end of the day, we can now say with absolute confidence that we have 80% success rate, 90% success rate, 95% success rate on the beavers. And we're making this point really because of what we saw from the CVR data that was released by INEC for the data capturing devices, the, the data enrollment device um, um, progress, it, the, data enrollment exercise it conducted between June 2021 and July 2022. Of that, INEC says that 1.78 million Nigerians were invalidated. And INEC gave three reasons why they did that invalidation. Number one is that they have maybe perhaps made double or multiple registrations. Number two is what INEC calls fake or outrightly fake registrations that fail to meet INEC business rules. And then number three is uh, visibly on the age footer. So those are the three criteria that the ABIS software, the ABIS by now, I mean the automatic biometric identification software, invalidated the registrations of 1.78 million Nigerians. And when we subjected INEC data, the data that INEC gave publicly, to, we now saw that the Southeast and the South South presented an anomaly at the rate of 49.3%. The Southeast and the South South accounted for nearly half of all the rejected registrations. Of all the other regions in the country, they presented a national average of 70.2 rejection, whereas the Southeast and the South South presented 35%. So the Southeast and the South South presented twice the number of invalidation on that. So we now ask the question, what was the criteria used for these invalidations? And they gave us the criteria and we were satisfied with that fairly. But when the problem came was when the voter register was displayed, we now said, so that ABIS is not as efficient as advertised, right? Because that ABIS software that I've told you invalidated the registrations of 1.78 million Nigerians failed, curiously, to, to with, you know, remove the many incidences of multiple registrations, fake registrations, and underage registrations that were seen and reported by Nigerians uh, uh, during the voter uh, display of the voter register that was concluded last month by INEC. So, you, so because of that, Yes. We're now saying that the abyss may not be as efficient as advertised. And we're now saying, oh no, since we have had complaints from people about beavers failing to authenticate them, can we now start looking at the data? And we looked at the data. There was no data to show us because the beavers is not measuring its fail or success rate. And now we're now asking for slight updates on the beavers so that at the end of the elections, we can look at the data and conclusively say that Beavers was deployed nationwide and it had a 17% fail rate and 80 something percent nationwide, you know. And then we subject that fail or success rate to a regional analysis, statewide analysis, to make sure that there is no region that is presenting an anomaly. So you're probably thinking that the, the rates might be skewed in the sense that when you look at the, the software, for instance, that verified, you know, the people as regards age, overage, underage voting and things like that, it was skewed towards the southeast. And it's, it's quite curious, like you said, because somebody would have thought that most of those occurrences were probably in the north. You know, and most of the, the pictures we have seen of voters card with underage voters were, you know, from the north. You know, most of those occurrences, but now that it's in the southeast, you say probably uh, that's quite nebulous for you. I also want to go further, that, but the beavers is by model. So if one form of accreditation is not successful, there are other forms of accreditation that is not successful. And that's why INEC was actually saying that it got a very high percentage in the so elections we were talking about and other elections that they have used it. And they keep making the, the argument that there's no case for, there's no place for incident from that all of that has been taken out. So what do you say to that? 
Now, there is, no, there is no case for incident form, that is the thing. But the DGG has projected, and we've seen that if we use the data from the abyss to make informed projections as to what might happen, we are suspecting, and there is no data to back this up, that is why we want to measure it, that it may tend to present a situation where we have a high voter accreditation rate in some regions and a high rejection rate in some regions. But again, there is no data. All we're saying is anybody who presents himself for, a for validation on the election day, let the beavers say, we have 100 people who presented themselves in polling units X, Y, Z. And out of that 100 people, 27 we are successfully accredited. And then we subject this data to national, state, and regional spread so that we don't see the kind of anomalies. And by the way, there is no region in Nigeria that you won't find incidences of underage voters. There's no region in Nigeria. We've looked at the vote register. There's no region you won't find that. But we find that there is a high preponderance of it in a particular region. And then, curiously, that region that has the highest preponderance of these things had the lowest invalidation rates. And these are the things we are talking about, that the beavers may be made to function well in some regions and may be failed to reject high number of voters in some regions, as we have seen with the Abyss software. And that is, the Abyss is because you have the number of successful registrations, number of rejected registrations by states. But beavers is not measuring number of successful, uh, uh, it's only measuring number of successful uh, 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 validation on the election morning. But what of the people who failed? But, but who presented their, their, their PVCs. In Anambra, for instance, the second runner-up of that election, Valentine Ozibo, in the morning of the election, Beavers failed to accredit him with his INEC issued um, 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 PVC. It was on the several tries that that was happened because of his profile. And we saw that there were a lot of people who didn't have that kind of profile, who after you have tried one or two times, they will ask you to set the step aside. And one person you ask to set the step aside is one vote that you've lost. Okay. And now we're now saying, can we have data that measure, measures all those people we asked to step aside valid. so that we can subject them after the elections to a, a, a database okay. analysis? But valid argument, but I want to go back, back to the APIs. But is this same software that was used across board. So are you saying the software is probably skewed in a way or form? It's the same iteration of the software that is put across board. So why is it slanted towards, why are you saying it's slanted towards a region over the other? Because it's the same software. The claim, the claim by, by the DGG is that the software is not as efficient as advertised. Between that time we made that claim and now, we've spoken to forensic experts who have told us that, for instance, the data from the CVR exercise is loaded onto the software in batches. Okay. And if you're a forensic guy and you understand anything about, about uh, this software, yeah. you can increase the, the threshold. Yes. For instance, the similarity must meet 99% for you to accept, or you can significantly reduce the threshold. And once you have any slight alteration in uh, you know, threshold for acceptance or rejection, then you could begin to see some of the discrepancies we see. And then we're not saying that that is what happened. But we're saying that these systems can be made to work like that. OK. Uh, so that's why you're saying let's subject it to peer review and uh, let's look through the process. I'm sure your concerns have definitely been pushed out there. And it's out there in the public. That is, why, that is why we are calling, the DGG is calling on all the stakeholders, including the media, the civil society, the political parties and their campaign councils, our development partners, and indeed the academia, those of them in the ICT world, the okay. important stakeholders should be brought in to display okay. and demonstrate how these systems work so that okay. that integrity test we are talking about will confer some form of uh, inspire, uh, inspire confidence on the systems to produce thank, credible thank elections so in 2020. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.